This trip was for my 64th birthday. It was my choice where to go and what to do and what to see. So I did some research beforehand and picked the state of Hidalgo. The first place that we went to was Huasca de Ocampo, but this area that we were in was called Santa Maria Regla. We stayed in a cabin for three nights. The cost of that was 204 US dollars or 3,487 pesos. Here we are strolling around the grounds of the Prismas Balisticos. Well, actually, before you get to the Prismas Balisticos, there's a restaurant, some nice gift shops. The grounds are really well kept. Um, we enjoy just walking around here as well. They also offered zip lining over the Prismas. We visited Prismas Balasticos of Santa Maria Regla. It was jaw-dropping. Giant columns of basalt which were formed millions of years ago. It is one of two rock formations that exist in this geometric structure in the world. They are approximately 30 meters high or about 98 feet. The cost was 100 pesos each or approximately 6 US dollars. No Inapam discount card was allowed. There was a restaurant that we ate at and snacks that could be bought there also along with micheladas. This site offers horseback riding, swimming, or taking a boat ride through the San Antonio Dam. We didn't do any of those things. Further to the northeast is Pina de Air, another national basalt formation we did not visit. Part of our issue was we were carless. We decided at the last minute not to drive. A big mistake, I think, on our part. This was one trip we really needed transportation to get around in this area.
So Paulette and I decided to go sightseeing in the state of Hidalgo today. Beautiful sight, uh, but a lot of rain. We got caught up in a rainstorm, so we're hanging out in the covered area trying to wait it out. We went with our friends to the town center the following day, an area called La Loma. It was small with lots of street dogs that I remember, lots of vendor shops and sites and a few restaurants too. We had shrimp for lunch. It was pretty yummy, I gotta say. I had the coconut shrimp, Mark had cooked shrimp, and our friends had shrimp cocktails. A shout out to our friends, Arlene and Annie Vett. Walking through the town, there's the regular things that you would see. Pottery stuff, hats, knick-knacky stuff, um, just a lot of different variety things that you would find in shops and sold by the vendors and food. And I regret not buying that little avocado guy, by the way. We didn't get a picture of them, but they sold gnomes everywhere there. We've heard rumors that there's lots of shopping going She's on here. She's more of a shopper than here, I am. Here are my like three third, primary third suspects. Bags. <laughs> third bag Although I've three heard stores. that this one is just the porter <laughs> for this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she only calls me to pay. To pay. That's all the time I actually call <laughs> The town has cobblestone streets and narrow streets, enough for one car to drive on it. The authentic old buildings standing are from the 1700th century. The main town square is the widest area where you can find many restaurants, vendors, and shops. Walking down streets, you will find hotels and more shops, and red clay pottery can be found throughout the little town. As we walked through the town, you could see gnomes all over. Legend has it that these little pesty creatures are troublemakers. They eat livestock and that they're also hardworking and that they live a simple life in the forest. When my friends asked why, the, why so much of the paraphernalia through the town, they said many have seen them throughout the forest saying that they are real and have their own little towns in the forest. Some people believe that this is just a legend. You decide for yourself. Wasco was a really cool town. Uh, not only is it a Pueblo Magico, it's the very first Pueblo Magico. Uh, walking around it, the, the buildings were really cool, very colorful as you see in a lot of Mexican cities. A lot of places to eat, a lot of food stands as you see here, more crafts and pottery, things like that. Uh, a lot of artisans working here. Wasca really exceeded my expectations. If you're in the area, you definitely need to check it out. Uh, very beautiful, very interesting. I really liked it too. I was pleasantly surprised. It really exceeded my expectation as well. I thought it was a great, great place to spend the afternoon, have a meal, uh, kick back, uh, just enjoy the scenery. in the state of Hidalgo, Mexico, 
This is hotel and glamping. And you can either glamp in one of these that's here. You can stay in the hotel section. There's pools. There is a um, huge water slide. This is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. Up here, you can see out. And it's got its own little chair, couch area, table. We've got one that has two beds in it. And its own private bathroom. It's got areas where you can do plug-ins. Here's the bathroom area. And shower. Our friends were nice enough to drop us off the next day on their way back home. The cost for one night was expensive. It was 2,468 pesos, approximately 145 US dollars. But it was my birthday and it was a place that looked really cool. So one night we could do. And I gotta say the grounds were spectacular. Um, really well maintained. There was a lot of activities there for kids to do. There was a kids area, there was a huge slide, uh, an area for volleyball, uh, soccer, things like that. Yeah, they had like a recreational field out there for kids. I actually had no idea that it was this nice of a place. This was its own private resort. It was very nice. It had its own restaurant. We stayed there on a Sunday night and there was hardly anyone there. It was like we had our private resort. Some breakfast toast that I'm going to feed the ducks. Quack, 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 quack. They're all coming to eat. What you're looking at now is the clock tower in the center of Pachuca. It is really beautiful. Uh, the only bummer is that there's a bunch of graffiti at the base of the clock tower. But other than that, it's really spectacular to look at. Looking around, you'll see that a lot of the housing is actually built on the sides of mountains, and some of them are fairly steep. We stayed at Hotel Cerros for three nights. The cost was 2,548 pesos, approximately 150 US dollars. The location was perfect. It was right across the street from the famous clock tower. Pachuca is the capital of Hidalgo and is located in the municipality of Pachuca de Soto. Known as a silver mining town, to date these mines have provided over 60% of the total gold production of the state and 50% of the silver production. The population is 3 million plus in the state of Hidalgo. The, the elevation ranges from 2,100 meters, 6,900 feet to 2,432 meters, 8,900 feet. We 
did a day trip there for the afternoon in Tula. We took a taxi to the bus terminal and bought our round trip tickets with our Inapam card. It ran us 320 pesos combined, approximately $19 USD. Tula or Tula de Allende is in the southwest part of Hidalgo. The bus ride was an hour to an hour and a half long. This is a beautiful painting in the center square. We started out having breakfast in a center square. There we met a young man and struck up a conversation with him. His name was Enrique. He offered to go with us to the archeological site. He is a student at the university and said he had time. He said his brother spoke English better than he did. We walked to the Colectivo bus terminal and his brother Emilio met us there. We took a Colectivo to the area where the site was. We would have never been able to know where to get off by ourselves. We walked to the site and they became our new friends and Tula and our tour guides. Like many other archaeological sites in Mexico, um, there is a long line of vendors waiting to sell you stuff. Um, a lot of it looks like the same thing, just from one booth to another. Um, it's kind of unfortunate um, that this goes on. I think it takes away from the experience a little bit. But as you can see, we'll be getting into the archaeological zone here as soon as we get out of the booth and we walk by some pretty amazing cactuses. Tula, also called Tulan, an ancient capital of the Toltecs in Mexico. The warrior statues are 4.6 meters, about 15 feet tall. They are handcrafted on top of one of the pyramids. The statues may have been there as early as 750 AD, weighing approximately several tons each, made of basalt and volcanic rock. No one knows exactly how these figures were transported to the top of the pyramid. The cost of admission with the Inapam card was free, otherwise it's 90 pesos per person, which based on today's exchange rate is about five US dollars. This has been one of those places that I've wanted to go to for quite a while. Uh, just a side note, the cement that you see at the bottom of the pillars is actually a later addition to help keep them intact. But looking around the grounds was amazing. We were able to climb on the pyramids, unlike, say, Chichen Itza, where we weren't able to, and look around. We were there. It was not very busy at all. There were just a couple other people there looking around. Uh, there's Paulette with a peace sign. There are the boys who were our fantastic tour guides and new friends. The steps going up to the pyramid were very narrow. You almost had to walk sideways, especially for Mark with his 15 foot feet. Size 15 feet, not 15 feet. <laughs> Just want to clear that up right now. But yeah, she makes a great point. The steps were treacherous going up there. Be very careful when you're climbing to the top. And of course I was the last one up. Yeah. So just check out these statues here. They were amazing. Some of them I think at one time were taller, uh, but we were so fortunate to be able to see even these. We believe that some of the temple was used for sacrificing, which is sounds barbaric now, but I think it was pretty normal back then. The climb down was far worse than going up. Yeah, I completely agree. There were some stones that were carved out and had animals on them and stuff like that. We're not really sure what those were exactly, but I was just in awe to, to be there and to look at all of this and imagine, you know, what must have gone on there. As you can see, there's still some work going on here. On the walk back, we passed by a bunch of mesquite trees, uh, many different varieties of cactuses while we were headed back to the road. Very interesting. Las Grutas de Tolatango. This was an amazing place and this was my highlight for my birthday. This was like a five star out of five star.
When Mark and I visited Mexico in 2018, we heard about Tolatongo. We never made it there, so I'm so glad that we went there for my birthday. It was everything I expected and more. The ride from Pachuca, where we stayed by the watchtower, was approximately two hours. The cost was 1,100 pesos, about 65 US dollars each way. The roads can be bumpy, and as you get closer, the roads become very windy. Cost for uh, the admission was 1,080 pesos, $64 in US uh, for three days. Even though we were only there for two days, that's just kind of the way that they roll. They get another day out of you. 180 pesos per person per day is about $11.50. The hotel cost was 5,600 pesos for two nights. That was super high for us. That was about 332, 334 US dollars. We had two queen beds in our room. It was cheaper than getting a king bed. We also had a small balcony. Uh, lockers were available uh, if you wanted them when you were out and about at the river or um, in the uh, hot pools for 100 pesos, about $6. Um, the water comes from a complex series of channels inside the mountain that heats the water to about 20 Celsius, 68 degrees, but Mark and I thought it was more like 73, maybe 74. So Mark and I have our own little section in the river, huh babe? Yeah. We got our own little pool area right here in this section. But it's a Friday afternoon, probably around 12, 12.30 now. Weekends I hear are super busy here in Tolatanga. It's gorgeous. It's worth it, you know. If anybody has a chance to do it, I say do it. It, yeah. is, it is expensive for the hotel, a cabin, food, and the food so far has not been good at all. Um, so, if you guys can do this, do it. It's just, it's just gorgeous. These guys with the green shirts are putting rocks back up on these miniature dams. They also offer tent camping. Either you can rent a tent or you can bring your own and it's a lot cheaper if you bring your own. Also you can buy supplies there. You can buy wood for fires. You can rent tents. You can rent sleeping bags. Everything like that. It's another incredible, beautiful, natural wonders of the world to visit in my opinion surrounded by mountains everywhere and waterfalls. The slightly acidic nature of the rainwater also reacts with the alkaline calcium rocks resulting in the formation of caves and underground streams. The turquoise water is from the mineral salts. The caves were spectacular. There were many pools there for people to enjoy as well. They were smaller, much smaller, and far more crowded than the river was. I think Paulette and I really enjoyed the river more uh, than, the t than the pools. Yeah, absolutely. Because in the river, it was like having your own huge pool where there was only Mark and I in one area and uh, a lot less people there for sure. 
Yeah, but look at that tree that we just scanned by. That was pretty amazing. Uh, the scenery is amazing too, looking out over the pools into uh, the mountain across the way. How many pools do you think that there were? Gosh, probably 40, do you think? Because no, they were I different spots. I don't think 40. 30? Maybe, maybe 30, if that, yeah. Right. And from what I understand, the white that you see by the pools, that's all just from natural sediment from the water. Right, but those pools were man-made. Man -made. Yeah. Paula and I should have shopped around a little bit more and looked at the cabinets first, uh, but we were just thankful to get into the hotel. There are three hotels, many cabins that rent out for 1900 which is 100 US dollars a night. Um, we had no idea that there was cabins until we talked to somebody. The hotel and the cabins are first come, first serve, no reservations, so get there as early as possible. Up by the pools, there's a wooden bridge that you can walk across. It's pretty stable, and it takes you over to where you can actually go into another cave that Paulette went into later. You will see some stalagmites and some stalactites inside the caves. Uh, very cool. Quite an experience to go into these caves, even though they are very wet, hot, humid, um, but well worth it. This restaurant the first day, uh, the best thing about this restaurant was leaving it. The food was bad, as was the service. We also ate at this restaurant. Again, the food was not very good. Uh, service is probably a little bit better than the first place. Perhaps one of the most surprising things about Tolentongo is the fact that it exists not to any major business interest, government, or sponsorship, but entirely to the efforts and action of local people. 112 families share in the ownership. Tolentango is run by and for the benefits of the local people with part of the revenue being generated, consistently being reinvested into the site. Here is the view from our balcony. Here at Tolentongo, and there is the birthday girl. 64, baby! And I climbed 
230 steps going down to this tunnel and back again. Yeah. Yep. Will you still need me? This town is known by three different names. Real del Monte, Real de Mineral, and Mineral del Monte. It is another small mining town, one of 132 Pueblo Magicos. This is a place where it preserves its original architectural structures. Here you will find past days on the corner, cobblestone streets, lots of tin metal red roofs can be seen. There is an annual festival going on that weekend. Uh, it was a silver festival. We took a one hour bus ride and had to duck several times not to become decapitated by the low hanging uh, electrical wires. To get the mines working again, the investors formed the company Gentlemen Adventures in the Mines of Real Del Monte and recruited more than 130 miners and engineers from Cornwall. Coming in through Veracruz, some never got any farther due to an outbreak of yellow fever. This is where the pasties came into play, which you will see me try in the very next segment coming up right now. Alright, so here's Mark having his paste. 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 Go ahead, it's a mole. Paste. Mole verde. Mole verde. And this is known in the town of Rio del Monte. Very good. I'm not eating because I'm not hungry. We had a big breakfast at our uh, Airbnb that we stayed at. That's what it looks like on the inside. What's in there? Um, I think like spinach and there's a, a little bit of meat, maybe chicken. Yeah. Very good though. I'm glad I tried we it. We had enchiladas this morning for breakfast at the Airbnb that we stayed at. And um, they gave us three enchiladas. It was very good. It was uh, commented a lot on the Airbnb site. And uh, I could only eat two. And I had three cups of, um, small cups of uh, hot chocolate. And I gave mine to Mark, but he's a big boy, so he eats a lot. That's very true. Very true. And uh, So how would you rate that? Oh, it's like a nine out of 10. Oh, really? It's really good. Wow. Possibly a little too spicy for you. Yeah. But very good. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, there was a silver festival going on there. And so that's what you see here. However, they also displayed a lot of different types of food, candies, and stuff like that that were all for sale. Seemed like mostly food and candy and not a lot of silver. Here we have a quick view of the ride on the tour bus that was very bumpy. And as we stated before, there were some very low hanging wires. So um, you can do a lot of video because you always had to be looking out for what was coming next towards your head. Many local residents are proud to have an English surname and the Cornish pastry considered their traditional dish today. The elevation here is 2,682 meters, approximately 8,800 feet. The population is around 12,000. So I wanted to give you guys a breakdown of this trip. 
Uh, for accommodations alone, that was 946 US dollars. The round trip fare for Pachuca and Tula was 105 US dollars. Uh, taxis, local buses, combis, 217 US dollars. Food was 489 dollars. Tour fees were 107. The total was approximately 1,866 US dollars. Our final thoughts on the places we visited on this trip are... Well, my ultimate was Tolatongo for sure. I think that that's a place that everybody needs to see at least once and do it while you're still mobile and can get around and climb those steps because there's a lot of steps to be climbed there. Right, and Tolantongo is basically on the side of a hill, so you're either going up or you're going down. And you know, a lot of people consider that like uh, an art, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Eden of Garden. Eden. Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, a lot of people consider that it's like a paradise, mm -hmm. and it really is when you walk those grounds. Yeah. Though it was expensive, still well worth it. Once uh, in a lifetime trip. Right. What were your thoughts on Pachuca? Pachuca, I honestly wasn't that impressed. Yeah. I've seen a lot of other places that the central area is much prettier. Yeah. Yeah. I was just lukewarm about it. Um, Real del Monte. That was that was very nice. It was yeah. a small town. Um, I love the colors that they have there. Um, what else did I love? I loved. I don't know. Just walking around it. It, it wasn't very big. You could easily see it in a day. Yeah, yeah. I was very impressed. I I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, and what did you think about Huesca? Huasca de Ocampo? Yeah. I really liked the town. What did you think about Tula? Uh, Tula was a small little town. Uh, we went there mainly for that archaeological site. Mm -hmm. uh, so we didn't really see a whole lot of it. Yeah, I thought it was cute though. And I love the archaeological site. Uh, it met all my expectations as far as that goes. We'd like to thank you for watching our video. And if you like what we're doing, we hope that you would subscribe to our channel.